Thank you very much. Are you ready, sir? My dear, have you decided what you'll have for dinner? Oh, yes, I have. I'll start off with escargot Marseille with Chablis 1964. Then crack crab with mustard sauce, Manhattan clam chowder, Caesar salad for two, don't forget the anchovies. Chateaubriand, blood rare, with escalloped potatoes a la pierre, vegetables and garni, of course, with that, a bottle of Margot 57, asparagus tips, hollandaise sauce supreme, fettuccine alfredo, a magnum of Piper Heidsick champagne, Five star, 1961. 61. And of course, don't forget the bala caviar, caviar. For dessert, I want baked Alaska, cherries jubilee, chocolate mousse, strawberries teddy, and a demi-tasse of Irish coffee. My dear, tell me, uh, do you eat this well at home? Well, no. But then again, at home, nobody wants to fuck me. <laughs> Jerome. I'm sure I don't have to remind you of the importance of our being here. We must go over thoroughly each and every file submitted by our investigators. Then when we have cast our ballots, the world will soon know the winners of the World Sex Award. Here, here. And now if we're ready to begin. We have 10 areas for our consideration. Preliminary approach, truth, 
Consistency, emotion, appearance, timing, interplay as opposed to foreplay, pace, commitment, and overall performance. Observe the following representative scenes very closely. The dignity of the World Sex Awards depend on your judgment. Help! Oh, honey, come help me. I'm stuck. Uh, oh, it's no use. I'm stuck. Dummy, I told you not to use this bathroom. I just got through shellacking the toilet seat. Oh, well, it's too late now. I'm stuck. Do something. All right, I'm going to run upstairs and I'm going to call the rescue squad. Now, they'll be here in a few minutes and they'll get you out. Okay. Now, don't panic. I'll be right back. All right. Operator, give me the rescue squad. And for God's sakes, hurry. Thank God you're here. Don't worry about a thing, buddy. Everything's going to be okay. Now, where's the wife? She's right down here. Come on. Okay, the rescue guys are here. They'll get you off in a minute. Now I'll go get them. Oh, wait, wait. Give me something to cover up with. Something to... Here. Okay, come on. Well? Come on, come on. We can save your wife, mister. But the cowboy's a goner. I just don't believe it. That nurse Owens has got to be the most incompetent nurse I've ever seen. Just look how she screwed up these reports. How in the hell did she ever get to be a nurse? Simple. Her father is chief of staff of surgery at the hospital here. <laughs> Sons, I told you to prick his boil. Help! 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 Hey, hey, what's going on here? Hey, lady, what the... Oh, my God. Thank heaven, you. I thought no one would ever... Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're going to be okay now, lady. You're going to be okay. Uh, tell me what happened. Well, this morning, my husband came home from work early, and he caught me with my boyfriend. And he shot him. <laughs> then he beat me up, ripped off my clothes, and threw me out. Oh, and then this motorcycle gang came along, and one of them had a sidecar. They forced me in it and dragged me way out of here, tied me up like this. <laughs> All 17 of those brutes raped me and left me out here. like it just ain't gonna be your day. Three, please. Ballroom, please. Sorry. Didn't realize I was crowding you. Dolores, now that we're married, I think it's time to get to know each other directly and without shame. Now... Do you know what this is? Well, that's a wee-wee. No, no, my dear sweet Dolores. That is not a wee-wee. From now on, we shall call this a prick. Oh, come on, Arnold. I've seen lots of pricks, and that is definitely a wee-wee. <laughs> think you're doing? I'm sleeping on the couch. Are you kidding? This is our wedding night. 
and there's certain duties that a husband must perform. Oh, no, not me. My mother told me that you women have teeth down there, so I'm sleeping on the couch to avoid pain and injury. Teeth? <laughs> Why, that's the most ridiculous and asinine thing I ever heard. Now, you listen to me. I've been waiting 27 years for this night, and I'm not going to let you spoil it. So you get in that bedroom right now. You've got work to do. Oh, no, I'm not. I know you've got teeth down there, and you're not going to convince me otherwise, so there. Okay, stupid. Take a look at that. Now, do you see any teeth down there? Are you kidding? With gums like that? What is it, my son? Tell me. Here, my son. Write down your last words for your beloved wife. Go ahead. Write them for her. She's hurrying here now, but I'm afraid... I'll make sure that she gets it. Hose. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that here, in this sex clinic, ladies and gentlemen, you will learn the solution to your particular problem. Now, you should feel free to ask any question on any subject, whether it concerns impetus, or penis envy complex, or nymphomania, or fellatio compulsion, or any of those good things. Doctor, I really have a problem. For me, sex is just a pain in the ass. And you, sir? Do you talk to your wife while you're having sex? Yes, if I happen to be near the phone. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow's your birthday, my sweet. And I don't know what to get you. <laughs> You've got everything, of course. Well, surely there must be something. By Jove, I think I've got it. I'll get you a monkey. A monkey? What on earth am I going to do with a monkey? Well, you don't own one, do you? No, I don't, but where will the poor beast eat? Why, in the dining room with us, of course. What about its quarters? Where will the beast sleep? Why, in the bed. It can sleep with us. Really? In the same bed? Think of that terrible, obnoxious odor. The stench. The smell will be awful. I got used to it. And a monkey will get used to it. Well, now how can you tell him that your best man went and slammed your schlong in a door? And then, well, then I had to go to a hospital, put the thing in a sling. Oh, it was hot talk. No, how can I tell her? She's waited her whole life for this night. Uh, all right, thanks. Thanks, Doc. Bye-bye. Darling, I'm ready. No man has ever touched these before. No man has ever seen this jewel. All yours. 
Well, that ain't nothing, honey. Look at this. Still in the original crate. Yes, ma'am. Can I help you? Yes. There's something you could do for me. Uh, now, wait a minute. Now, uh, now don't get excited with that thing. Uh, I'll give you all my money. Don't want your money, Sonny. Well, what is it you do want? I I'll do anything you say. Just don't shoot. I want you to jack off. Jack off? In the middle of Interstate 39? You got it right, Spark. Now, get going. Uh. Okay, lady. I hope you're satisfied. Can I get out of here now? Nope, Sonny. Beat it again. Oh, lady. Have a heart. Oh, okay. You're the boss. What's it again, Buster? Or I'll blow your brains out. Sonny. That was a pretty good one. Now, let's whip it again. Lady, I don't care if you shoot me. I don't care if you kill me. I couldn't raise another heart on no matter what you do. That's just what I wanted to hear. You can come out now, Mary Lou. This no. This man's gonna give you a ride to Fresno. I've noticed you in here before, and I, I really think you're beautiful. Thank you. You know, I've been noticing you quite a bit. I was just wondering if, well, maybe you'd like to come home and meet my parents. How dare you! You I guess a blowjob would be out of the question. You know, my wife's acting weird again. Jumpy and twitchy. Nervous all the time. Real mental case. Uh, it sounds like she just needs a rest. Are you gonna send her to Palm Springs this year? No. I think I'll just fuck her myself. on the amateur hour from Hannah, Missouri, Mr. Lionel Schlemmer. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Lionel. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Um... Tack, Mr. Tack. Tack. You're just, just a little nervous, aren't you, Lionel? <laughs> well, tell me, Lionel, what do you plan to do with the uh, prize money if you happen to win our talent contest tonight? Well, I plan to use it to have a hernia operation. A hernia operation. 
Rhino. You just take your place, okay? And uh, we'll be with you in just a moment, okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, stepping into the amateur hour spotlight from Hannah, Missouri, Mr. Lionel Schlemmer singing and dancing to Dixie. <laughs> Boy, 25 years in prison, that's a long time. I'll bet you it was rough on you. Yeah, it taught me a lesson. Believe me, I'm never going back to that hellhole again. I don't blame you. Hey, what the hell's your problem, man? I mean, since I walked in this place, you've been eyeballing me. Like, what's your problem? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to stare at you like that. You see, I just got out of prison. I did 25 years for raping a buffalo. I thought for a minute there, you might be my son. You know, being married to Harry is really rough on a girl. If his penis was a half an inch longer, I couldn't stand it. Me neither. Hey, Patrick, I haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah, how are you? Let me have a beer, will you? Hey, listen, uh, how's the wife? Oh, you didn't hear. She died last week. Gonorrhea. Strangled to death. Gee, that's too bad. Mm. Hey, wait a minute. People don't strangle to death when they have gonorrhea. Well, they do when they give it to me. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Hilton Bank, your WWA MC. I'd like to welcome you this afternoon to Wide World of Athletics. This afternoon, we have the privilege of interviewing the lovely wife of all-star pro golfer, Mike Birdie. How are you today, Mrs. Birdie? I I'm fine, Hilton. It's a, it's a great and sacred pleasure to be on your show. Well, thank you, Mrs. Birdie. Uh, let me ask you a question. Before a big tournament, is there some special thing that you do for your husband? Oh, I usually rub his balls. Uh, how, uh, how, uh, does this uh, seem to help? Oh, it straightens out his putts. You see, we talked about various techniques, but today I should like to take a survey on how many different positions you folks know for sexual intercourse. Two. Two, yes. Seven. Seventy-six! Seventy-six. We get all the nuts in here. Eleven. Eleven? Three. Doctor, I only know just one. And which one is that, my dear? Oh, that's, um... That's when the man gets on top of the woman and he sticks his thing in. Seventy-seven! Now, let me see. Three children, and you've been married six and a half years, is that correct? That's right, Doctor. Do you ever use Vaseline for sexual purposes? Oh, very often. Doesn't everyone? Really? Very good. And, uh, where do you apply it? On the bedroom doorknob, of course. The bedroom doorknob? Why there? It keeps the kids from coming into the room while we're screwing. <laughs> <laughs> and you, sir? Do you cheat on your wife? Who else? Doctor, my husband thinks I'm frigid just because I detest sex. Isn't that ridiculous? <laughs> See what I mean? This broad's driving me nuts. What do you mean I'm driving you nuts? Why, well, you're the most despicable bastard. Please, let's not have any arguments. We're only here to help. Sorry, Doc. All right, now let's get on with this. How many children do you have? We have three children. All by rape. Why don't you go fuck yourself? 78! Kid, you're sensational. Baby, Lou Latzfinger, talent agent. That's the greatest melody I've ever heard. Thank you. It's an original. I write all my own tunes. You write all your own stuff? 
Just what I'm looking for. With songs like that, I can get you booked at the palace. Who's your publisher? I don't have any. Publishers want nothing to do with me. You put me on, kid. You're talking to Lou Baby now, huh? Your songs are great. You could sell millions. Why won't the publishers talk to you? I don't know. They say it's my titles. Titles? Well, what's the name of the song you're playing now? Well, this happens to be one of my favorites. It's called, I Love You So Fucking Much I Could Shit. Peaches, pears, peaches, pears, peaches, pears. Hey, Sadler, have you got a minute? Come on, I want to talk to you. I'd like to buy some peaches. Oh, sure, lady. I got plenty nice, fresh peaches. But tell me, are they nice and big like these? Uh, yes. And are they nice and round like these? <sighs> and are they nice and firm like these? <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> Lady, I'll tell you what's wrong. <laughs> Today my house burned down. <laughs> I lost all my money at the racetrack. <laughs> my wife ran away with my best friend. <laughs> my car was repossessed. <laughs> and now I'm going to get fucked out of my peaches. Wow. What a shame. Serves him right. People a little less noise and more work. Sorry, Jerry. This is one of our local sporting houses that has been having some financial difficulties lately. And don't come back till your mother gives you some money, degenerate. Oh. Bill! 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 I haven't seen a ceiling since last winter. It's been so long I can't remember when. If business doesn't pick up very shortly, Well, I'll be virgins once again. Oh, God forbid. Now it's time we must examine all our methods. Now it's time we must adapt to something new. In order to get back our former patrons, it's obvious there's one thing we must do. My creditors are tired of all my begging. My girls are ready for the auction block. The welfare office turns me down each Wednesday. <laughs> Last week, I put my diaphragm. I'm a 
feel different. We gotta get back in the car. You're in the wrong vicinity. We gotta get on our behind. So in order to solve all our problems, a franchise that we knew would be just right, we started our own takeout service. Quickie delight. Yes, sir. Two blondes and a redhead coming right up. Good evening, Quickie delight. No, sir. It doesn't matter how far away you live. It'll be hot when it gets there. Good evening, Quickie delight. Yes, sir. Oh, is that to go, or will you eat it here? Now, no more. I don't know how they'll make ends meet. Virtue is its own reward. Virtue. <laughs> Malcolm, well, look, at, look at this next one. It's up your alley. Up yours. Gee, you're a little dry tonight. Well, move up a little, schmuck. You're eating the sheet. <laughs> You know, this wife swapping business wasn't such a bad idea. I only hope our wives are hitting it off this well. Welcome to that famous TV show, the show that loves to give away money, TV Jackpot! <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, now let's meet our next contestant from Wedlock, Oklahoma, Miss Marion Cleavage. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the show, Marion. Thank you, thank you. You don't mind if I call you Marion? Oh, please? no, not at all. <laughs> Maybe it sounds so formal. Yeah. yeah. Now, that's a very interesting town you come from. Tell me, were you born in Wedlock? Oh, no, I was born outside of Wedlock. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's very good, man. Well, you know how to play the game, don't you? Oh, yeah. All yeah. right, well, then let's play TV Jackpot. <laughs> okay, for $50, Marion, who was the first man? Um, uh, Adam? Right, for $50! Yeah. All right! <laughs> okay, now, you have $50. Mm -hmm. Do you want to keep that, or do you want to try and double up? Go, 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 go. Oh, yeah. She yeah. wants to go, ladies and gentlemen. She yeah. wants to go. All right. All right, Marion, for $100, who was the first woman? Um, Eve? Right, for yeah. $100! You have $100. Do you want to quit 
Or do you want to double up? Go, Marion. Oh, if you answer me, you answer me. who just boarded the bus, please step forward. Well, the lady who's reading the Bible with the flowers in her hat and the white blouse, please step forward. You forgot to pay your fare. Lady, pardon me, but I think he's talking to you. Fuck him. Drafting here? Uh uh. Why? I think I'm getting a chest cold. Yeah. Jordan? Do you like a cigarette? No, sir. No, sir. Well, give me a light, then. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Th th thank you, Jordan. That's fine. I'll just light it myself. You know, Jordan, I made my way up on my own. My old daddy never gave me nothing. But I fought my way for everything, and I made my way to the top. Yes, sir, you did. It's going to be different with my daughter, Jordan. You know, she's my darling, my angel, my apple of my eye. She's going to have the finest, and I mean the finest, including college. College? What, what college are you going to send her to, boss? Well, good old Georgia Tech. That's what's college, boy. Georgia <laughs> Tech, you must be kidding. Huh? No one goes there but football players and whores. Jordan, I'll have you know that my dear wife went to Georgia Tech. Oh, really? What position did she play? Hey, bartender. This guy's playing with himself. Oh, just ignore him. I can't. He's using my hand. <laughs> I tie one on last night. I went to a wild party and I got so smashed, I left my wallet in the bathroom. Aren't you going to go back and look for it? Well, I'd like to, but I was so drunk I can't remember where the house was. <laughs> well, come on. You've got some important IDs in there and some credit cards. you got to remember something. Think. Let's see. Uh, there was a house in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Had a green door with, uh, with bullhorns on it. And there were red drapes in the living room. Oh, yeah. In the bathroom was the wildest thing you ever saw. A gold metal toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's not going to be too hard to find. Green door with bullhorns and a gold metal toilet. Come on, hurry up and get dressed and I'll help you find it. Go ahead, ask her. Uh, did you have a party here last night? Yeah, we did. What's it to you? Do you have a red drape in your living room? Yeah, we do. So what? This might be a strange question to ask, but do you have a gold metal toilet? Mm -hmm. Case, Annabelle Carson, accused of prostitution.
Your Honor, this is a disgrace. Why, my mother would turn over in her grave if she could see her poor, innocent baby being accused of prostitution. Young lady, you have seven prior convictions of prostitution, and that's just in the last three months. Thirty days. Bailiff, take her away. Oh. Oh. Next case, Darlene Darcy, accused of prostitution. What kind of a world are we living in anyway? Can a girl ask a sailor for a cigarette without the police thinking she's a hooker? Well, I've, I've never been so embarrassed or humiliated in all my life. Miss Dorsey, you've had 15 convictions in the last two months. Oh, but Your Honor, it's a mistake. I'm, I'm the victim of the... 60 days. Bailiff, take her away. Oh. Next case, Marjorie Pittens, accused of prostitution. Your Honor, I am a whore. I know it's a lousy thing to say, but it's the only way I know to make a living. Do with me as you want. My life is worthless. I have no reason to go on living. My dear, in the 20 years I've sat on this bench, you're the first honest woman to come before me. And your honesty shall not go unrewarded. Case dismissed. Uh, Bailiff, have a check made out for $500 from the Policeman's Welfare Fund and give it to this young lady. And Miss Pittance, we hope that this money can start you on a new life. Next case, Morris. Goldberg, accused of selling fruit without a license. of trying to lie to a learned man like yourself. I too am a whore. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Hilton Banks, your WWA announcer. This afternoon, we are interviewing former ace Air Force pilot during the Second World War with the RAF, Mr. Sven Schwensen. Now tell me, Mr. Schwensen, during your experiences in the Second World War with the RAF, what was the most frightening experience that you had? Well, <laughs> well, I, I was flying over Germany, all by myself. Then all of a sudden, to my right, there was this German Fokker. And then to my left was another German Fokker. And then I was completely surrounded by all these German Fokkers. Um... Let me explain to our viewing audience that the German Fokker, spelt F-O-K-K-E-R, was a German plane flown during the Second World War by the Luftwaffe. Now, isn't that correct, Mr. Schwensen? Yeah, 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 but these Fokkers were Major Schmitz. Uh, let's go back to our main studio now. Okay, Mac, what'll it be? Oh, dear me, um, I'd like a glass of milk. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> Thank you very much. My, that was delicious. Could I trouble you for another glass of fresh dairy? Say, listen, there aren't many people in here. Uh, where is everybody? Bunch of guys out back lynching some queer. No shit. Anything 
things are really tough. On top of everything else, my wife's cut me down to once a week now. Oh, man, that's too bad. I think it could be worse. What do you mean? I know two guys she cut off altogether. Hey, Lou. I saw some guy trying to screw your wife the other night. Did he succeed? No. Then it wasn't my wife. Two vodka, Marty. Say, honey, I sure would love to get into your pants. Sorry, baby. One asshole in there is enough. I'm as amazed as you are, Mrs. Colfax, but I, I sent these tests to the lab four times, and each time they come back positive. Pregnant. Are you sure? Well, I'm 79, and, and Morris, my husband, is 84 years old. I'm sorry, but there can be no doubt about it. You're pregnant. Oh, that lousy bastard, that, that, that no good son of a bitch. Oh, wait like it, Mom. Kill him. Hello. Morris? You lousy sex mania? You know you got me pregnant, you son of a bitch, you? Who is this? And then you can imagine my embarrassment, Doctor, when on the night of our 25th anniversary, my husband told me I was really big down there. My goodness, what a large vagina. My goodness, what a large vagina. Well, that may be true, Doctor, but you didn't have to say it twice. I didn't. Well, you're in excellent shape, Mr. Goldberg. And I have some very good news for you. Huh? I was just talking to the lab. It's definite. You do not have VD. Oh, thank God. I was so worried. I mean, what does it look like, a man 74 with a, a social disease? Uh, but tell me, Doc, uh, I still have a drip down there. Uh, it's not VD. What is it? Well, let me ask you a question. When were you last with a woman? Well, I'm still pretty active, you know, for a man my age. Yes, 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 I'm sure. But when were you last with a woman? About six weeks ago. Well, you better get right back to her. You're just now coming. Well, let's see now. Can a guy get a breather around here? Jesus Christ, come on in already, come in. Hi, Mr. Lastfinger. Could I talk to you for a minute? Kid, everybody wants to talk to me. I really can't be bothered. Can't you see I'm busy, huh? The accountants are coming first thing in the morning. I gotta get these books doctored up. Feed it, will you? Wait a minute, I, I wanna break into show business. All right, sit down, kid, huh? Thank you. Look, everybody wants the business. They all want it. The lights, the glamour, the roar of the crowd. Look, kid, show business is a jungle. It's a jungle out there, they'll tear you apart. I want to stay right here until I get to show you my act. You want to show me the act? Okay, show it to me. Don't take up too much of my time. Just show it to me, then get out. Kid, if that sounds coming where I think it's coming from, this is the greatest new act I've ever seen in my entire life. It'll make you us a fortune. Stay right where you are. Don't move a muscle. This is Lou Lastfinger. Get me the head of the Morris Agency and hurry. Yeah, hello. Joe, Lou Lastfinger. I hate to wake up at this time, but you're just not going to believe it. I found the greatest new act in show business. It'll make millions. It's a class act. I can't believe it. It's coast to coast television. Performances in England, London. It's unbelievable. All over the world. Well, well, sounds great. What is it? Well, it's hard to explain to you. You'll have to hear it. Come on over, kid. This could be your big chance. Just give me about eight bars, baby.
Joe, how'd you like it? Great, wasn't it? Why, you dumb son of a bitch! You mean you wake me up in the middle of the morning just to hear some asshole play Swanee River? <laughs> Just listen to him, kid. This is the big time, and it's all for you, Omar, baby. You realize there's 5,000 screaming women out there to pay 10 bucks a piece? You know how much money that is, kid? 50,000 clams, and it all belongs to you and me. I told you I'd put you on top, kid. You know what I mean? Just remember, watch your timing. Don't knock yourself out going to preliminary. It's in, out, and ADO. Short, quick, stroke. You got it, baby? Good. Well, fuck fans, this is the evening we've all waited for. The judges are carefully going over tonight's ground rules as the officials arrive onto our stage. At bedside, the referee, Skip Latimer, standing by at all times, will be Dr. Maurice Bolden of the Mayo Clinic. Official scorekeeper for this evening's screw fest, Mr. Harry Finley. There's the signal from the judges, and I see that tonight's challengers are being led onto the stage. The referee has removed the challengers' numbers as the first competitor takes her place on the field of action, anxiously awaiting her crack at Omar, that master of penile manipulation. The Libido Theater proudly presents the great Omar. There it is. Now get out there and... I see Omar is about to begin using his famous end of the bed mount and let the action start. You know that Omar is now using the Peruvian warm up position, first introduced by Portfolio Sanchez at the Barcelona Open. Ole Omar! Ole! Get your weight on your elbows, Omar! Watch your knee, watch your knee, kicking on two. Another pelvic thrust, another pelvic thrust. Omar's going in for the kill. Just the number one is in trouble. I think he's got her. The quiet is deafening as the doctor examines the first challenger. It looks like there might be a decision. Orgasm. Score! Orgasm. Go! Orgasm. Go! Orgasm. Go! And another one. I've never seen fucking like this in my life. It's too much for you. Keep the act, kid, and keep it moving. Do it for me, Omar! Do it for me! Score! It looks like he got it with the old pelvic crust, Montana Bounce Combo. Great work, Omar! Great work! Come on, Omar, give her one for the Gipper. In the entry, four strokes! In the entry, four strokes! It's a hole in one for Omar! A hole in one! Unbelievable! Orgasm. Score! Uh-oh, something's wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Omar is wobbling. He's getting weak. I don't believe it. Omar's gone limp. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm stunned. I don't believe it. The great Omar has petered out. Get out of here. 
in here. Come on, move it. Come on, kid. Come on. Who am I, kid? What's Mr. my name, kid? What's my Fast name? Finger. What happened? What happened? What do you mean what happened, you big dumb faggot? You fast died dead away. That's what happened. You blew 50,000 bucks, you creep. Those dames out there pay 10 bucks a pop to watch you ball 100 bucks. And what do you do? You screw 64 of them and then you pass out. What the hell's wrong with you? I don't understand how this could have happened. I did all right this afternoon in rehearsal. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Your applause is deeply appreciated. Now, as you know, any ventriloquist can make a dummy talk, but believe it or not, the star of this here county fair, me, will make these animals talk on my next show. One by one, believe it or not, these animals will talk. So you all come back in half an hour for the next show, and I promise you that you will hear these animals say things that you only want to hear them say. So you all come back now and have a good time around the fair. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Say, Mr. Ventureswitz. Yes, my good man. What can I do for you? Can you really make all them animals talk? Absolutely and most definitely. If that sheep on the end say anything about me, it's a damn lie. <laughs> at the doctor today and he said I had a beautiful body. Yeah? Well, did he say anything about your fat ass? No. Your name was never mentioned. Darling, look what I got you for your birthday. Okay, where is he? Please, I haven't finished voting yet. Cleanliness uh. is next to godliness. <laughs> William Shakespeare. Fuck you, Lenny Bruce. Hey, Joe, mm. you like the women with the big breasts, huh? Nah. Huh? You like the women with the big ass, huh? Nah. You like the women with the big openers? Huh? Nah. Then how come you been screwing my wife? You ready? Don't have much time. Got a big party coming here in 15 minutes, and my wife's gonna be here at 3.30. God's sake, hurry up. My girdle? When did you start wearing my girdle? Since my wife found it in the glove compartment of my car. Did you see a blonde running down the hall, all completely naked? Uh, no, we haven't, Pops. Well, if you do, you might as well bang her, but she's all paid for. Ma'am, but I shall insist that you, you back up. You see, you see, the, the occupant of this limousine is none other than Lady Epworth Tarkington Price, the Duchess of Kenworth, sister to the Baroness de Marco, a member of Her Royal Majesty the Queen's First Privy Council, third cousin to Sir Archibald Farnsworth, the Duke of Tuscany, and sixth in succession to the crown of Edward IV. What do you think 
I have in here, a bag of shit? Peaches! Pears! Peaches! Pears! Hey, Mr. Pe Peddler, come up here a minute. I've got some business I want to discuss with you. I've been watching you push your cart down the street. And I must say, you arouse a desire in me. I tell you what, if you could take me into the bedroom and sexually satisfy me, I'll give you this brand new $5 bill. What do you say? Why not? Business is business. KCOK, KCOK on Far Out Channel 69. And right now, let's get it on with that new superstar dynamite Hebrew band, the Four Skins Rock and Roll. Yes! I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired of waiting around for Big Al. That creep will never show. Who calls Big Al a creep? He's my most favorite disc jockey in the whole world. I love Big Al. And I'll wait here for him forever. Well, not me. I'm leaving. Call me tomorrow. Sweetheart. I listen to your show every day. I've never missed it. Oh, oh my God, I love you. I love you. That's right, darling. I'll do anything in the world for you, Big Al. Anything. Of course you will. Anything? Anything. Anything, Big Al. You name it. I just can't believe that I'm really here. I, I can't believe that I'm really sitting next to Big Al. You want to make Big Al happy, don't you, dear? Oh, yes, Big Al. Anything. Anything. Now, you know what to do with this, don't you, dear? Oh, you bet I do, Big Al. Hi, my name's Cindy, and I'd like to dedicate this next record to all my friends down at Chris's Malt Shop, and Jamie and Susie and my boyfriend, Joe. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, the star of tonight's show, Mr. Pat McCormick. On behalf of the World Society of Sexual Arts and Science, I would like to welcome you on this momentous occasion. As you know, these coveted awards are presented in recognition of those outstanding individuals who throughout the past year have brought honor dignity, and respectability to the wonderful world of sex. Just a, before this night is over, each one of these gold dildies will rest in the hands of those few deserving people who were carefully selected by our distinguished board of judges. Thank you. Now, the Watergate security systems have tabulated the ballots and sealed the results in special envelopes. And here to represent that firm tonight is Mr. Lionel Travis. <laughs> the first award of the evening is probably one of the most important and sought-after honors of the night mainly because of the high standards required in the areas of stamina, enthusiasm, courage, and of course, attitude. The nominees for Best Lay of the Year are 
Faith Carruthers, Tucson, Arizona. Margaret Miller, 29 Palms. Irene Randall, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Helen Duvall, Skokie, Illinois. Sheila Kramer, Racine, Wisconsin. The envelope, please. And the winner is Irene Randall. night of my whole life. <laughs> I mean, it's so hard to believe that I'm even here at all tonight. Two years ago, after my accident, they said I'd never fuck again. But with the help of so many generous and wonderful people, I was able to get back on my back. I'd like to thank them, my mom and my dad. I also want to thank the Flying Zambini Brothers and the 23rd Armored Division of Fort Knox, Kentucky, the Michigan State Marching Band, and all those wonderful, wonderful guys who never left their name. Thank you. Love you. best solo performance of the year. A man who personally will attend the John Wayne vasectomy next month, Mr. Junior Lohman. Great job. I know it must have been hard for you. There you are, Junior. Well, the moment we've all waited for is now at hand. The Inner Species Award. It is given to the deserving couple who have shown the most compatibility and responsiveness to each other during the past year. Now please watch the monitors. The nominees are Elmer Brown and Clarabelle, New York City, Linda Wayne and Rex, Encino, California, Gordon Lamont and Morningstar, Key Biscayne, Florida, And the winner, the winner is Elmer and Clarabelle. Got a little O under his tail. Uh, I also have another surprise for you, Elmer. The mayor of this city has given your wife permission to shit in the street. <laughs> and now, the award for the best dramatic performance for male or female in a bedroom situation. And the nominees are Miss Roberta Kenyon. I'm saving it for my wedding night, Denver, Colorado. <laughs> Mr. Harrison Marks. Do it to me, and I promise I'll do it to you. Beverly Hills, California. <laughs> Mrs. Marsha Kaplan. Not tonight, Harry. I've got a headache. Oak Park, Michigan. <laughs> Mr. Mark Sterling. All I want to do is touch it. Eugene, Oregon. <laughs> Miss Charity LaRue. I'm not that kind of a girl. Lake Placid, New York. Montague Corrigan, I'll only put it in a little bit. Palm Springs, California. Envelope, please. The winner is Montague Corrigan. I'll only put it in a little bit.
As we come to the climax of tonight's festivities, it gives me intense pride and pleasure to introduce the star of stage, screen, radio, and television, a man who will sing the song of the year, Mr. Keith Brazell. <laughs> In all of life, there are some fleeting moments. Love is one of those that we can share. Banish all your woes and all your heartaches. Be happy with the ones for whom you care. Money will never answer all your problems. Happiness is just a state of mind. Only friends will stick when there are troubles. They need help. Try only to be kind. So don't fuck around with love, baby. Don't fuck around with love. Even Adam had it from the starting of time. The apple was delicious, but it tasted like lime. Remember, don't fuck around with love, baby. Don't fuck around with love. Noah had a ball just sailing his ark. He was known for never missing his bark. Matthew had a lover and his name was Clark. Don't fuck around with love. Fuck, 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 fuck. Don't fuck around with love, baby. Don't fuck around with love. Samson and Delilah had a great affair. Once he did her wrong, she cut off his hair. So don't fuck around with love, baby. Don't fuck around with love. Birds, trees, and flowers bloom in the spring. The newest bat in town is in everyone's swing. Do it more than twice, baby. You are the king. Don't fuck around with love. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Bye. 